Hi, this is Mrs. D. Decker here to show you how you're going to do your technology theme assignment. First of all, um, I would just read this paragraph. In this assignment, you'll be given the opportunity to reflect on a Bible verse, Matthew 5, verse 16, which says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. To reflect is to add your thoughts and experience relating to this topic. Example, Bible verse, Matthew 5, verse 16. One example might be that you shine by smiling and greeting others when you see them. In this reflection paper, you can add your ways in which you can shine before men so that you, they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Also, you'll be reinforcing your skills in word processing using Google Docs while doing this assignment. First of all, I, I encourage you to watch this video and you can actually stop and start the video while you are doing the assignment so that you can do each piece separately. And hopefully this helps you. So first of all, um, there are just a few steps, or I should say about 12 steps to complete this assignment successfully. So I have some specific things to help you with your word processing skills. First of all, you're going to enter your the date, the current date, your name, and student number in the upper right hand corner. So when you get your assignment, you'll see all of this information and then you will be able to type all of your paper into this last slide or I should say last page of your Google Doc. So here you could enter in the current date. So 128 of 2021. And um, you could put a little space in there and then you can put your name. So I'm gonna just put Mrs. D. Decker. And then you just put your student number. If you don't know what your student number, you can ask me or your homeroom teacher. So that's what you're going to do to start out and then just press enter and if you notice the cursor is over here at the right hand side of the screen and what we will want to do for the next step is a matter of fact I have one that's already finished so you could see how it's supposed to look when you're all done. So here's one that's completely done and so I'm going to use this to actually edit it. So here I'm going to just press enter and you'll see the cursors right there and you can easily scroll back and forth to do each step. Otherwise I highly encourage you if you have a printer to print it off so that you can mark off these steps as you do them. It just makes it easier to have something to check off and be able to glance at as you're doing the project. But if you don't you can just scroll back up and see the steps. So now the first thing I want you to do is change the margins via the file menu. Page setup, margins top, bottom, left, and right. So in order to do that we need to go to the file menu and you're going to go to page setup and you're going to change these margins from 0.3 to 0.5. So, and you can easily copy them for the remaining margins shown here, like bottom, you'll have 0.5 for the bottom, the left side, and the right side. And then you just press OK. And what this is called is either a page setup window or dialog box, just to give you some of the terminology. So now I'm going to press OK. And now it, what it did is it actually changed the margin or white space between the words and the actual edge of our page. So this is my left margin and this is my top margin right here where you see the I beam. And then here is the right margin and then the bottom as well. So now um, I'm going to go to the next, oops, I'm going to go to the next thing, we want to change the font drop down. There's a drop down, that's this right here. This is the font. This is a drop down when you see that little triangle there, and you can just click on it and you get more options. So, what I want you to do is I want you to select either Times New Roman 
Azure font or Garamond or Arial. This is the show that I know that you learned how to do the actual font changing. So I typically use Garamond because it saves on ink. So I'm going to click on Garamond and then I can um, go to the next step which is step four. You're going to type in the entire Bible verse Matthew 5 verse 16 so that your light shines before men etc. So now one way is you can actually copy it from BibleGateway.com so I can bring up BibleGateway.com so I will just copy this and bring up Bible Gateway and I can press enter and then you can just actually enter any passage here and look it up quite easily. So 5 verse 16 and I press enter and or you could press this search button and here it is. It's showing it right there and you can actually simply select it, copy it, control C and then go back to your document and then paste it in. So I'm going to pretend like I'm starting over. Control V. Um, and we can actually get rid of this one just so you can see how I'm doing this from scratch. So then you want to select your text because it's asking you to actually center the text using the align. So if you click on align and then center and then you also want to bold it and I'm also asking you to change the font size so that it's 16 points. These are what's called points in here. Right now it's at 12 points. So now I want to increase it to 16. So there you go. And then if you notice I don't have the reference to the Bible verse so I want to type that in or else copy and paste it from that site as well. You can, it's probably easier just to type it in. So there you got it. And now the next step I want to do is I want to start entering my um, my paragraphs. So I'm going to go back up to the top and here you uh, we've done some of these steps. We've done step four and you want to select left align on your toolbar and select the menu format line spacing and single. So I want to go up here. This is line spacing. Oh and it's already single so that works out great. And then um, you want to be in left align. So if you're down here by your your um, Here's your cursor right here. It's blinking at us. That Right now the cursor is in the center. So that tells me I'm aligned center. I want to be aligned left. So to go to align left, it's you just hover over and you can find out which one is aligned left and you just click on it. And now my cursor is blinking at the left margin. So this is perfect. So now I'm ready to start typing my, my paper. Now if you prefer you can write it out before you come in here and actually do it in here or you could type it in here as you go. Um, so what I had written here, so this is what I had typed. This Bible theme means we are supposed to be separate from the world. We are supposed to be like God. We are not meant to participate in worldly activity if it is not pleasing to God. Now this is my answer to the actual um, instruction here because I actually have instructions on what you have to put in each paragraph. So you're typing the first paragraph with three sentences induce, introducing and describing this Bible verse like in what, what it means in your words. And then each sentence must have at least six to eight words in them minimum. Select the whole paragraph and make sure the font size is 12 points. This should be the font size for the remainder of the paper as well. So going back to the to where my actual paper is, I want to select this paragraph, this my first paragraph, and make sure that it's 12 points. And you want to make sure that it's Garamond or whichever font that you had picked. You could either pick Garamond or Arial or Times New Roman. 
So to get to Times New Roman, you have to actually scroll all the way down here and select it there. Um, so it's up to you, but you should use the same font throughout the whole document so that it looks consistent. So, um, so I can space this up just to kind of give less space in here. And then now I can begin working on the second paragraph. So let's see what the instructions say about that second paragraph. So it's in step seven, type the second paragraph with three to five sentences of ways you can apply this theme to your life at home and at school this year. Hint, start the sentence with, I can apply this theme at school by blank, and you would fill in that blank. Each sentence must have at least six to eight words in them. Here's an example of a way you can apply this theme at school. Being a good role model for my classmates by following the rules of the classroom, like not talking when the teacher is talking or giving the teacher your full attention while they are speaking. So now I can show you what I have here. Um, now I'm going back to what how I can apply this in my home life by not watching TV shows that have a lot of violence in them and then or inappropriate behavior. Instead I will read my Bible daily and seek wisdom from God and the godly people in my life. I also can be kind and respectful to those in authority over me. I can also apply this theme at home by helping out with chores and getting along with my brothers and sisters. I can apply this theme at school by not engaging with kids who are doing wrong, or in other words, I shouldn't go over by them and join them. So if kids are harassing someone, I shouldn't laugh, I should go help that person. So this is what I wrote, but I would want you to write in your own words what you can do. And you can use some of these themes in these sentences, but I want you to write it in your own words. Now going back to the top, I can actually see what the last paragraph, the last paragraph, this is step eight, will type at least three to five sentences to tell why this is a good theme for you to reflect on this year. Hint, how will it benefit you and others if you apply what you are saying in your second paragraph above? Each sentence must have at least six words in the minimum. So if I scroll down, I have my last paragraph. I say the Bible theme, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven is a good theme because we can help others feel good about doing what is right and hopefully bring more joy into the school. And now I'm going to go back up and we're going to do step nine, which is insert clip art or picture. You only need to do one, but you can do two if you find that you want to do two. Um, but no more than two or points will be taken off. So here I'm going to try to insert an image. Right now I have this image, but pretend I don't have an image. I can actually do the menu insert image and search the web. So here I just had sunshine. So I can look for anything about sunshine or whatever you feel really brightens your day that really makes you feel um, Jesus is the light of the world, you could put. So here I'm going to select this picture and insert it. And if by chance I accidentally inserted it, like let's say I had had my cursor right here and I inserted a picture in there. So here I'm going to get rid of this. Um, let's say I accidentally inserted it right after the word help. So I'm going to show you how to get out of that situation because that's a common question I get. So I'm going to select the picture again and insert it. And see how it kind of messed up my text and you wouldn't want it to mess up your text. So just click on the picture and click on what's called wrap text here. It's just a little icon down here called wrap text. So I'm just clicking on it and now 
because I did that, I can actually move the picture freely and move it where I really want it, which is at the bottom and not embedded in my text. So hopefully that helps. You can also size your picture. Always use the corner so it stays um, in the right proportions and, and looks clear actually. So you can size it by any corner. Hopefully that helps. Um, and then I think we are almost done. So you get the, you've inserted the clip art. So you've done step nine. So now step 10 is to choose three words to apply the dictionary define tool to find words that could use a different word to replace them in your sentences. Highlight the word with your mouse and then go to the tools menu dictionary to find a synonym. Enter a different word to replace. Bold and underline the words you replace as well. So you have to do this three times. So now I'm going to go to the bottom where you see my, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing all three. I'm going to do one of them. But here's how these other two that I did prior to doing this video, um, this is how they look. They're bolded and they're underlined. Now I'm going to pick another word here. I thought I would take um, this word separate and change it to a different word. So now I've highlighted it and one way you can change it is you right click and you can click on define separate or whatever your word is. It's going to be defined in whatever word you had chosen. So now I think um, I like the word different. So I'm going to click on different and then I can see, yeah, it's pretty much what I want it to mean. So I'm going to highlight the word different here and then control C. And then you can double click a word and it selects it. It's kind of slick. And then you can go control V and it popped it right in there. But if you notice, it looks a little different um, and you want to make sure that it's bolded. It looks like it is bolded. But we can check if you click on the this these three dots, you can see all of your toolbars. So it is bolded. So you can see it's bolded here because it's got the slight um, background on it. Now I want to make sure it's underlined. So now that um, I click the underline, it's underlined. And now you can click anywhere off of it to see how it looks. So now you need to do this three times. So you'll bring up this dictionary three times. Now if let's say um, you're not comfortable doing the right click, you could actually go to the tools menu as well, but you have to make sure that you've selected the word you want to change. You click on tools and dictionary and that will give you the same thing over here as you would. So let's do another word. Let's say meant just so you can see how that looks. So dictionary and see how meant is brought up. So it does the same thing. It's just two ways of doing the same thing. So hopefully that helps. Now I'm going to go back and see what my last steps are. You want to make sure all your spelling and grammar and capitalization is correct. Sometimes it'll give you hints. Like if you misspell something, let's say I spelled person, P-R-E-S-O-N, um, it would actually, oops, it'll actually give you some hints. So like here, I'm going to click on person because I like that suggestion. Sometimes it'll have a squiggly mark underneath it. Um, if it's a proper name, you can ignore the squiggly. Like if it's your friend's name and you know how to spell their name, um, it sometimes flags those too. But as far as actual words, it will let you know somewhat if there's just some problems with your grammar and you can correct it. So hopefully that helps. And then last but not least, you want to check your work by using this rubric below. Basically, the rubric is like a shortened version of all of the things that need to physically be done to the document to be successful. So hopefully that helps. And um, yeah, and I look forward to seeing how you do on it. Thanks.